Hello and welcome. My name is Jacqueline Dooner. I'm the founding director of Miriam Gallery. We are an artist-run gallery and bookshop in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Through deeply collaborative relationships, we produce exhibitions, artist book projects, and public events. We are honored to partner with Artistic Noise to co-produce their very first scene. Uh, the youth of Artistic Noise has been working on this project since October of 2020, and I know they're absolutely thrilled to share their process, their inspiration, and their experience in developing this collaborative work. So without further ado, I hand it over to Curtis Young, the, exec the Executive Director of Artistic Noise. Thank you for being here. Hi, my name is Curtis Young, Executive Director of Artistic Noise. Art is a powerful tool to effect social change. Our mission is to bring the power of artistic practice to young people who are incarcerated, on probation, or otherwise involved in the juvenile justice system. In addition to creating space for youth to tell their own stories through the practice of art, our programs assist them in building paths to a successful future, uh, while gaining essential leadership skills to advocate for themselves and for the communities around them. We invite you to learn more about our work by visiting our website or to follow us on social media. We hope you enjoy the show and the work our young people have produced. Thank you all. Hello and welcome to a session of um, arts and entrepreneurship with the youth of Artistic Noise. You are lucky enough uh, that you get to be a fly on the wall for uh, basically um, what one of our sessions looks like. Um, you don't have to be a fly though, you can be like whatever, like... A centipede. Yeah, a centipede, whatever like sticks to a wall, you know, that's like totally up to you, gecko like totally whatever your, your style is. Um, so I'm gonna kick us off by um, first, oh, my name's Audrey, um, I'm a cartoonist and um, I would like everyone else in the group to also introduce themselves so those watching at home can know who y'all are. Um, who wants to start us off? I can start, uh, hello, uh, I'm Jada. This is my cat, Phoebe, hello. Okay, bye. Yo, 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 it's midnight. I know you appreciate my face right now, so it's okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like, this is a dope person in this session, sharing info and cool art, looking at my other art mates, whatever you want to call them, getting inspired, and like, yeah. <laughs> my name is Zainab but I go by Z. I am a scholar. I go to school, same school kids. Um, yes, I'm here with my, what, what peers, coworkers, man, whatever it is. Uh, and yeah, hope y'all have fun and enjoy drawing today. Hello everybody, my name is Sam. I am an artist and a full-time mother. Oh. So sweet. Hi, my name is Judah. <laughs> Say hi, my name is Judah. Hey, Our honorary artistic noise member. <laughs> and um, I guess I could pass it to Eliana. My name's Eliana. Um, I don't know, I guess I'm doing whatever I do. Hey everyone, sorry I'm a little late, but I'm glad I was able to make it in here. I'm Victoria. I'm an art therapist with Artistic Noise and a painter, and I'm excited to see how today goes. Hi, everyone. My name is Paige. I'm super happy to be here. Um, I am also an artist, and I work as the curator of artist books and public programs at Miriam Gallery in Brooklyn. Um, and Miriam is working with Artistic Noise to co-publish this incredible zine that all of these amazing artists have worked on over the past several months. There it is. Oop, upside down. There it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're. I'm. I'm excited to dive in. Thank you guys for having me here.
So normally the way a session goes is um, we uh, start with um, like a check-in where everybody just announces how they're doing, where they're at, what the vibe is. And then we have like a prompt or like a theme um, where there's like a subject that we kind of just want to engage as a group and unpack as a group. Um, one thing that we definitely can all agree on is that uh, these virtual sessions have been super reliable for us during the pandemic experience, um, mostly because uh, a lot of us are looking for like a sense of community right now when we're like feeling very isolated. And so having these like structured conversations has been conducive to getting to know each other and also in like, I don't know, just kind of like getting through this. Um, so we're going to have one of those basically, and then it's going to lead us into a, a creative exercise that you are more than welcome to engage in yourself. Um, to kick off today's subject, uh, I'm going to pass it along to my dear friend, Z. Z, take it away. Oh my gosh, I'm your friend? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, what we're going to be talking about today basically is how you find purpose in your life, you know, in hard times, like specifically for right now, how you found a passion or how you found that creativeness or something to look forward to um, during the pandemic, if you want, per se, you know, and how do these things connect to each other? Like for us, we're connected through art, you know, we're connected through what is this Wi-Fi? You know, we're connected through these things. You know, so like, how do you find connection in your life? You know, so that's what we're going to be talking about. So I'll pass it to anyone who wants to start first. Um, uh, I definitely got to say, it's the ambition for me. Like, you know, it's it's the it's the will to succeed. Like, you know what I mean? That that's how I find purpose. I set a goal and I get motivated. Like I, I will compare the situation and I'll compare it to my, the goal in my head or the dream in my head. And I really think like, I will turn that dream into reality. And like the process is just so fun. Cause you, you, it's, it's a whole experience. It's a whole lot of opportunities that come your way. You know, it's a whole lot of people you run along, you know, a whole lot of things being exchanged, set. <laughs> it's a whole lot of things and like, it's just, it's, it's dope, like, and it just brings me so much joy in the inside, which I think is just way more than anything materialistic on this planet. The soul, take care of it. What drives you in hard times, basically? Mm. Like, is there, like, yeah. something you look forward to, like a higher power? Or what do you look forward to? That's an excellent question. I think that, um, I mean, this is maybe, like, a corny response, but I do think that, like, conversations and community gathering really drives me and like I personally really love being a part of um, events with artists and public gatherings um, which is part of why COVID has been really hard for me because you know in my work at Miriam um, and as an artist I'm really interested in bringing people together for like live conversations I feel like that really motivates me and inspires me to kind of open up um, and to learn and become a better listener. Um, so that's that's definitely what excites me. And I think that's also what um, excites me about being here with you guys too, is that like, I can see that you guys have really built that super strong sense of community. And, um, you know, it's it turns into bigger, bigger things. And, and that's really special. I think um, in hard times, I'm more so, I think driven to, sort of maybe not escape but just try to take my mind off of things so I think for me music especially during the uh during these difficult slash uh unprecedented slash uh hard times uh, I've been listening to listening to a lot more music um I found this one band smashing the pieces music is fire uh also video games I love video games so those Two things have been kind of like my, I don't know, driving factors, I guess. Also my cat. She's kind of cool. For me, 
I think I had it like rough when the pandemic first started because like I don't know it was just a lot of things in my head and you know like me being very uh self-aware with what's going on in myself it drove drove me to a lot of things you know so it was like for me it was like praying you know like finding something to do to calm me down you know finding something to slow me down because I just like go from one thing to another to another to another you know so like praying for me like praying five times a day because you know in my religion that's what that's what we do you know Mm -hmm. so like doing that helped me like look to something other than myself because I was too focused on myself really Mm -hmm. you know with nothing else to do but be in the house so like looking towards something else to help me you know Mm -hmm. And also, it like yeah. moved me to more connections. Like, I'm gonna just chime in with Visa at first, and like, even even prayer, cause there've been times where like, like even I would just I would just ask for my like angels or whatever you want, or the universe to send a sign on should I finish school, cause I've been having a lot of internal struggles about finishing school. It's it's, it's like. Mm-hmm because my goals and it don't necessarily require school but that prayer that i sent out in the universe it got answered and i'm like well that's my answer so i should definitely finish school that helped me get and as you can see that was a hard time because like i've been battling that internal struggle should i finish school for like two years like just in and out in and out i constantly get in get unmotivated get out but now i'm ready to come in so, you know? yeah if i'm hearing um, everyone i'm okay. curious if i'm hearing everyone correctly like i keep this theme of like the universe keeps coming up, sending things out into mm-hmm. the universe. But also like when we think about hard times, usually what keeps us going, it sounds like are things that are larger than us that we can't necessarily pinpoint. Yeah, something other than ourselves. Something other than ourselves. And mind you, so much of our motivation, because I mean, I feel like we've had countless conversations in the past that talk about how all of our motivation and goals and resiliency does typically come from within, but there's something about community and coming together and feeling connected that exceeds like what's tangible. Does that make sense? You hit it to the T. Yeah. Ms. Vic. Okay, cool. Yeah, like even even in like um like how Jada and Audrey were talking about like gaming, even in gaming, that's a whole different world. That's a whole right. different yeah, universe, if you must call it, you know. You could even you're getting lost in something else, you know? Yep. Yeah, I thought yeah it's still games. a community. And right. it's still something other than yourself, you know, you're believing yep. in, or not even believing in, you're playing yep. in something or imagining yourself. Yeah, so we about to talk about our views on society, you know, how it affects us and, like, anything like that we can create, like, through our minds. So what if, you know, you had full liberty to tell your story about how everything like came to be, you know, the universe, the world, whatever you want to call it. Um, Imagine what if you could, you know, just make up your own version of like the creation of the world. Um, And then like what impact would that have on the world? Take a few minutes to uh, write what that would be.
Okay, so basically, I didn't write this down. This is in my head. But when I thought of like creating this like universe or creating like the creation of wor- the world or time or whatever, you know, thought of like, I-, I don't know if it's Greek mythology or something where it's like one of the gods, one of his punishments was like holding up the world or something. Mm-hmm. So like I took that, yeah, that that's, and uh, into that's like Atlas. the idea of like a mother figure. Yeah, like the mother figure. Like I wanted to change it into Mother Nature holding up the world, but she's not holding it up. She's giving the world a hug, kind of like giving that love, that motherly love, you know. So it's kind of like that. So I have that whole thing. So she's like creating this earth, like as her child, you know, her creation. So she's creating this earth, and she's creating the people and everything. And she's created this earth and now she's hugging it. And she stays like that for however long the earth is going to stay here, you know? So she's holding the earth up. And I feel like if this, if that were a thing to happen somewhere, um, the people would be more like, not as aggy as they are now. Like everyone's just mad upset no, for no reason, you know? Because <laughs> like everyone's stressed out. Everyone don't know what to do with themselves. That's so, right. you know, like, I feel like it would be more of like a family, you know, less of the murdering, less of the freaking global warming, less of Mr. Orange Man, you know, less of those types of people, you know, like yeah. there would be more understanding or even if there are differences and stuff, you know, it's more like, okay, we can disagree, but we can have a conversation without wanting to kill each other, you know, those yeah. kinds of things. So it'll be more of an open forum, I guess, you know, an open situation where not every country and continent is against each other and so secretive. It's a family, you know? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. So, yeah. And there will be more recycling. That's a big thing. And mm-hmm. there will be lots of plants and stuff and less. Yeah. And not, it will be no racism at all. At all. Yeah. Great. Everybody would have an equal field. You could be rich. No, there's no poorness too. It's just like Mm -hmm. you can either have money or a lot of money. But you know, a lot of money, not like a lot, a lot of money. Because you know, if someone has a lot, a lot of money, someone has a little bit of money. It's got to be like an equal thing. Mm -hmm. And there's no need for greed and all that. No greeting from money or food. Yeah. Once before time. It was nothing but the empty void of chaos. It was infinite, yet small. Everywhere and nowhere, bright yet dark. It was nothing, yet everything at once. And it was all that existed, because it had to. Then one day, chaos got bored as heck. This, nothing, this nothingness is great and all, that needs something to do besides existing. And so chaos got to work. Through forces unknown, the first world was breathed into life. Uh, however, it was barren, lacking the elements necessary for life. Chaos took care of this and uh, did something because I didn't finish. <laughs> but <clears throat> yeah, let's start. I, I, it's pretty much based on Greek mythology because in that version of the story, there's just chaos. And then, I don't know, just some lesser gods just get created out of nowhere and then they start creating life. Yeah. So yeah. I love the idea that like out of chaos comes, I don't know, more chaos. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. More chaos and order. Yeah. So now what are we going to do? We're going to take that writing and turn it into a comic. So what Jada just said, everybody take what you've written and now we're going to develop it into something visual. Um, so let's do, let's spend maybe... Honestly, just um, maybe let's spend like eight minutes drawing um, an interpretation of what we've written. And then those who want to share can share.
All right, y'all. If you don't finish um, during this session, you can always finish after session and then that's what you can drop in the Google Doc, right? I feel like that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Does anyone wanna share what they what they drew though? Okay, so, oh, oh no. Um, let's start. So we got once before time and then we just have void sub. <laughs> that's then, a void yeah like I wanted to show that it was kind of formless but also I don't know vast at the same time um and then I made like a little emanata it's got a cloud because he's bored there's nothing this is great and all but I need something to do I guess a universe wouldn't be a bad idea and that's what I got so far. But next step is bing, bang, boom. It's going to create life. Come through with that comics yeah. vocab. I heard it. <laughs> Sick. I can share. So I feel like D had proposed just making one image. So I kind of went off that. Mm -hmm. But then oh. I was thinking about how in the past you were like, a whole page can be a panel or whatever. So then I turned my one image into four panels. And it just, it's reminiscent of Jada's aesthetic. Um, because I was thinking about like mm. stars combusting. I kind of went with oh. like, you know, like the big bang type of idea, but mm -hmm. my, my writing had to do with um, a star splitting off parts of itself. Oh. Just like how sometimes people splits up, split off parts of themselves to like survive um so I was thinking about imagine like a star just kind of like splitting off endlessly and that's how like all the energy in the world was created so it was kind of like this middle area and then all this and then on the bottom is like this little dude who's like whoa whoa <laughs> that's amazing yeah also heavy on the void like Jada yeah. I can imagine like seeing a star exploding like up close and personal would be really cool, but also that's like the last thing you see ever. That would be you know, hella like... scary. <laughs> Just some ball of fire heading towards you. Okay. <laughs> Is it the... Then again, I'm like, did I draw the beginning or the end? Like. So for those watching, um, if you feel if you're feeling unsatisfied with what you get to see as far as the artwork. That's where the doc comes in because then you can refer to that to actually see the um, some more of the of the finished products. Um, obviously, art cannot be rushed. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's the excuse. <laughs> The first question that I have is, what have you learned during this project or how have you grown from it? And what might have been some of the unexpected challenges? So what I've learned from this project, I feel like is um, more consistency and like um, being patient with um, my process. Um, because I feel like for this project, like I started off really strong and then like I started getting a little lazy just because of like everything going on in my life right now but um I feel like it taught me to um like take out my sketchbook again like you know what I'm saying like take it out when when you're not really in the mood but like force yourself to do it just because like mm -hmm. the feeling of doing it for me is like very calming but like starting is like always the hard part definitely so yeah I, I think I've gotten better at like sharing my art with other people. And before I draw something and then I go, oh, this is cool. <laughs> and I wouldn't show anyone else. But I think this is um, kind of opened me up to sharing with other people and hearing what they have to say. I only used to do art in like second grade. And that's only because it was like a, a required class. But other than that, like I never did art. And like, like I never knew how good it can feel like good I can be at it like 
but I had drawn that that little piece for that zine. I was surprised. I'm like, yo, there's some heat. Like, <laughs> I didn't even know I could do that. Like, I'm used to drawing little stick figures or a little little two dimensional, you know, soldier men or something like that. But <laughs> that little piece for that zine was fire. So, like, I was definitely proud of that. Would any of you guys like to talk specifically about the stories that emerged through your comics that appear in the artistic noise zine? Um, were they personal stories or creative fantasies? Like, do you guys want to talk about the actual stories you made? Yeah, like my version of art was like writing, like I would write music and like I had to learn over the years how to transmute like stories and how I was feeling into words. So doing that into art was just like, definitely a, a eye-opening like you know type of experience for me so like a lot of the character herself um I related to because like me, myself I'm like really self-aware self-aware of my like social anxiety and all of that you know so like a lot of the characteristics or a lot of the small things my character would do I know that I do it because like I mean I'm I'm aware of what I I do in like school or if I'm near a group of people so like like when I was talking about when my character, she had seen a group of teenagers coming towards her and she was looking for her, her headphones and everything, like panicking because they're coming to her and she didn't know what to do. I do that all the time, you know, like panicking, looking for my headphones, or if I can't find them, I'll go hide somewhere until they pass, you know? It's like those kinds of little things that like I would do that I put in my character so it was like putting a lot of myself into my character and then like um also having like this creative fantasy type thing you know like what if i was a superhero you know what would that look like you know and also like a lot of my ideas with like global warming and like recycling and stuff you know because like she's a really big plant person and like really big on recycling just like i am i can relate somewhat to my character because uh they were their personality was sort of like witty, very sarcastic. I feel like I'm that way most of the time. Um, but like in their design as well, um, they wear like a mask over their eyes. I feel like I'm the same way. I just try to keep a low profile, but the location of the story itself kind of emerged from like, this fantasy that I had, like walking through this huge desert. I think deserts themselves, probably one of the coolest environments to like do any kind of art about because even though it just kind of like drab like this one color of the sand there's a lot of mystery around it like how did it get this way or like what secrets are there beneath it like what can you find okay so no it was actually like a fantasy but like um it, it was, like, a mixture of both, I feel like, for mine, because mine was, like, about, like, this girl who worked retail, and, like, she got a vaccine for, like, COVID-19, and she, uh, and she started having, like, these weird superpowers and whatnot, and, um, yeah, and she worked at Home Depot and stuff like that, and she started, like, healing people from COVID-19 and stuff, like, it was, like, reality mixed with, like, a little bit of fantasy. And I had fun making it. It was my first time doing a comic strip. And I actually like dabble in um, comic strips more now because of this. But yes. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's really cool when um when you can kind of like allow elements of your personality of your or of your life to kind of inform the storyline but then take it into a space that might never be possible in real life is kind of like a really fun approach to comics um what is unique for you guys about creating comics as opposed to other art forms how does it feel to share your work with the others in the group and see it all come together into one book and to collaborate with others I felt like it was really cool to see everyone else's like interpretation of the, the same idea, you know, like I seen everyone's comics and stuff and I was like, oh, wow, I didn't think of it this way. Or like they colored it this way. And I thought that was really cool, you know, so like we were able to share this unique thing, you know, it was kind of like in a classroom where you all are reading your things and admiring each other's things, you know, 
Like we were able to see, okay, who's better at storytelling? Who's better at drawing? You know, like who's able to eat differently? You know, it's like everyone had their strong suits. Maybe it was writing, maybe it was talking, you know, maybe it was drawing. You know? Yeah, that's a really beautiful way of thinking about it. Um, and kind of echoing that thought, I've been said in the chat, it feels great to collaborate with everyone and combine each other's style together. So it seems like a lot of you kind of share that experience, which is really, really wonderful to have as a group and kind of helps build community where, you know, you, like you said, like a lot of, you know, everyone can kind of contribute something different um, as, a, as a strength, which is that best case scenario, right? <laughs> Next question is, how has the pandemic and being at home affected your creativity? What has been inspiring and how did you guys get into a rhythm with the project? I feel like working on this during a pandemic really caused me to be very impatient with myself. Um, I feel like I procrastinated so much and like um, I'm also an essential worker as well. So it was like hard to like balance everything and like Audrey, I know Audrey was mad at me because he was like, girl, where's your comic? And I'm just like, oh my God, don't tell me about your comic. <laughs> what? I extended the deadline for you, okay? That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I know. He definitely was like really nice about it at least. But like, yeah, it was like really hard to like find the balance and stuff. But it was like so worth it because when I finished it and I looked at it next to each other, I was like, oh my gosh, I should publish this. Like, it was, like, really nice. And it, it was very relaxing doing it when I actually, like, got into the flow of, like, doing it. I was found a lot of different music that I think really just got me into the zone to create. Um, like, listening to music in general, just very, like, calming, I think, and inspiring for me. So that definitely helped. And also before I joined, like, Artistic in, like, what, September or something? Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't drawn in like a hot minute because like I just didn't feel like I wanted to you know it was like I had no motivation to do anything but like being able to like slowly go back into it you know it was like I was able to put pen to paper on honestly because it was like you have all these thoughts and stuff why don't you draw it why don't you write it you know and it was kind of like a therapeutic thing really I feel like being at home, it like progressed me, not progressed. I'm like, it motivated me to do something. Mm -hmm. It really important last question here. What advice would you give to other young artists who are nervous to jump in? Do it. Yeah, just, just do, do it. it. <laughs> at this point, like just, what's just the worst draw. that can happen? You at home, do it. Just just yeah. put your, your, your pencil or your pen or whatever so. material you have on whatever surface you have and just start making something. Yeah. What's the worst what's the worst thing that can happen, like we said? That you don't like right. it. Just try again. You at home. Yeah. Cause I feel like if you never take the leap, then what really can you accomplish in life? Because everything is a risk, you know? So like you have to do it eventually. So I would just do it when you can, you know. I think if you're looking for like inspiration, I mean, Google and music are probably your best friends, at least for me. They say, um, they say if you're nervous about doing it, about doing something, or if like you're scared about doing something, then that means that it's it's, it's gonna be an outcome of something really great. Yeah, I think all the good things in life, you you're always like nervous before it yeah. happens. We're going through a rough time right now. Honestly, the best thing you can do is try to get through it. You know, talk to other people. Be creative, do something, talk to people, you know, reach out. That's the best thing you can do right now because honestly, it will get better eventually. You know, you just got to stick through it.